Hey, welcome to Cheaper Cheaper TV. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. In this episode, we're going to talk about how this little piece of metal right here has caused many a discussion among Jeepers and why we're going to discuss in this video the things you need to know when towing with your Jeep. Stick around. Now, when it comes to knowing what you need to know when towing with your Jeep, it isn't that simple. I remember hearing some Jeep friends of mine discussing it and they were discussing how much you can tow and what you can't tow and they were throwing around terms like gross vehicle weight rating, payload capacity, gross combined weight rating, tongue weight, hitch weight, hitch rating, anti-sway mechanisms, weight distribution hitches, trailer brakes, trailer brake controllers, well, you, you get what I mean. So I had to do a little bit of homework because I wanted to learn a little bit about this and I thought I'd make this video and share with you a little bit of what I learned. Let's have a look. So when we start talking about towing with our Jeeps, of course the vehicle that we're talking about is a Jeep Wrangler. Now you'll have some type of trailer, it could be a utility trailer, a cargo trailer, an off-road trailer, a travel trailer, but for our purposes we'll just talk vehicle and trailer. So you'll be concerned with the vehicle's tow capacity. Now all vehicles have a rated tow capacity, but for the sake of argument, we'll look at a 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL four-door Sahara, which has a 3.6 liter automatic and eight speed transmission, as well as the factory equipped max tow package. That gives us a tow capacity of 3,500 pounds. So in terms of the trailer, the trailer will have a dry weight. That's the weight of the trailer itself. And in our example, let's just say that the trailer weighs 2,000 pounds. Now a vehicle with a tow capacity of 3,500 pounds and a trailer of only 2,000 pounds, you'd think you're set to go and you could tow that safely. But there is still more to take into consideration. Because you're not going to be towing an empty trailer around, there's going to be the payload capacity for that trailer. So the capacity, say, of this trailer, if it were to be a thousand pounds, when you add the payload capacity to the dry weight of the trailer, you have what's called the gross vehicle weight rating. And that's the maximum amount of weight that the weight of the trailer and its payload can be. And you can often find this number on the VIN plate on the side of a commercial trailer. Now, in a case of the example we're looking at, if the tow capacity of the vehicle is 3,500 pounds and the GVWR of the trailer is 3,000 pounds, you'd think you're all set to go and you're safe to tow that along. Well, there is still more that we have to take into consideration. For example, the vehicle itself has a curb weight. A vehicle's curb weight will be dependent upon the model of the vehicle and options for which it is equipped. For the sake of argument, let's just say that the vehicle in question has a curb weight of 4,000 pounds. The next thing that we want to take into consideration for the vehicle, other than curb weight, is its payload capacity. You could find the payload capacity that's specific for your vehicle on the driver's side door jam on the label. Now the things that make up your payload are the weight of your passengers as well as any kind of gear or equipment which you bring along. Keep in mind of course any mods that you make to your vehicle such as steel bumpers, skid plates, winches, larger tires and wheels all impact the amount of payload that you can carry with your Jeep. Now the things that also impact the capacity of the payload are things like the ratings of your tires, rims, axles, and springs. When you add the weight of that payload and add it to the curb weight of the vehicle, that's when you get the gross vehicle weight rating of the Jeep. Also what manufacturers put out in their documentation is that when you take the gross vehicle weight rating of your vehicle plus the gross vehicle weight rating of your trailer, it gives you what is known as the gross combined weight rating. So those two numbers of your vehicle and trailer should not exceed the 
gross combined weight rating. And for the purposes of our illustration, we'll say it's 9,000 pounds, but the gross combined weight rating of your vehicle can be found in your manual. So if we look at the example on the screen, we've got the Jeep and its payload equaling 5,000 pounds, and we've got the trailer and its payload equaling 3,000 pounds. So it seems that we are well below the 9,000 pounds gross combined weight rating. But there's still more to take into consideration. There's what's called tongue weight. Essentially, the weight of the trailer is supported on its wheels and axle plus the tongue. And essentially, they're engineered such that about 10% of the weight should be on the tongue, which is then put onto the hitch of the Jeep. This is to give you better control of your trailer when on the road. I'll have links to videos in the description section of this video that illustrate the importance of this concept. Now as much as you try to make sure that the tongue weight is 10%, you can never get that perfect. There might be a margin of error, it could be 10 to 15%. And that weight gets transmitted to the hitch of your vehicle. So in the example of a trailer of 3,000 pounds, 10% hitch weight would mean 300 pounds but if it was just a 15% tongue weight well that would add 450 pounds to your hitch and that weight that's imparted onto the hitch of your Jeep is now part of the payload of the Jeep and if you remembered how we had the weight of our payload distributed between two passengers and equipment well, if the tongue weight was 300 pounds, you now only have 150 pounds left to carry equipment. But if you weren't careful and say you added a few items to the tongue of the trailer, for example, a couple propane tanks like you see people do, or a battery, or a couple bicycles, or other equipment, if you have 15% tongue weight, well that would be 450 pounds, which would leave you no room for any equipment. But there's also something called receiver, hitch, and ball rating. The receiver on the Jeep Wrangler, for example, is a class two receiver, which is rated to carry 350 pounds. So if you were exactly perfect on our 3000 pound trailer with a 10% hitch weight, that would weigh 300 pounds and you would be within the limits of your receiver. But if you were off a little bit and say you had 15% tongue weight, well then that would be 450 pounds on the hitch. And that would put you over the rating of the receiver and you could possibly have a catastrophic event in a circumstance such as that. The other thing that you have to take into consideration is that the excessive weight at the back of the Jeep on the hitch will cause the back of your Jeep to sag. When this occurs, you would end up having loss of steering control as well as reduced braking capability and braking when you're towing all this weight is certainly something very important and that's why in the Mopar handbook for example they mention that if you are towing a trailer greater than a thousand pounds that you should have trailer brakes and each province and state has their own regulations where Generally, they start roughly at 1,500 pounds and some regulations are closer to 2,000 pounds. But essentially, that's the ballpark you're looking at if you have a trailer that heavy that requires trailer brakes. And if you have trailer brakes, then you need in your Jeep a trailer brake controller. Now, if you did get the factory tow package, the wiring exists for which you can connect a trailer brake controller. And I'm going to produce a video on the installation of a trailer brake controller in my Jeep. And if you don't want to miss that, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you don't miss that video when it's released. Also, when you have all that weight down on the hitch and you're approaching the maximum amount of weight on your Jeep, what some people like to use are things called weight distribution hitches. And essentially what they do is distribute the weight off of the back axle and try to transmit some more weight towards the front axle of the Jeep and the trailer. And that's a bit of an added expense as well, but a necessary piece of equipment when you're reaching the maximum capacity of towing for your vehicle. There's also anti-sway mechanisms 
and there are some weight distribution hitches that have built-in anti-sway mechanisms as well. In order to maintain safe towing operation when you are at your maximum capacity with your Jeep, a weight distribution hitch and anti-sway mechanism would be a good thing to have. And last but certainly not least, another item to take into consideration that I don't see talked about very much and I believe might be ignored quite a bit is the maximum trailer frontal area. In the manual, for a Jeep Wrangler with a towing capacity of 3,500 pounds, the maximum frontal area of your trailer should be 30 square feet. This is due to the fact that the front of a trailer would act as a sail applying stress to your engine and your transmission when towing. Determining the total frontal area of a trailer can be complicated with trailers that have V-shapes or wedges or rounded edges such as bowler trailers for example. Well, that's most of the terms that I can think of to share with you that I've learned about when you're considering towing with your Jeep. Just because somebody says that they can tow something, it doesn't necessarily mean that they should. You don't want to go beyond the limits of your vehicle and then have an expensive bill on your hands from a breakdown or even worse, a catastrophic event. I've read online that some people recommend sticking to possibly 80% of your towing capacity that way you've got a margin of error and you're not going to be stressing out your Jeep so much and it might help you stay out of serious trouble. If you're interested in knowing what the gross vehicle weight is of your Jeep and its payload, I'm going to put a few links in the description section of this video where you can go and look up the hard numbers for your Jeep and work out what kind of trailers will work with your rig. So I hope that you found that information interesting and helpful. And if you did, how about letting me know in the comments section below or by giving the video a thumbs up. It's good to know about this so that you don't get yourself into trouble if you end up in a situation where you need to tow something. It's good to have a general understanding of these things. And now in our tip segment, I just want to share with you a couple tips related to towing with your Jeep. Now for some cheaper Jeeper tips. Well, the first tip I'd like to share with you in this episode is to make sure you spray some rust proofing inside the receiver for your hitch so that rust doesn't build up. And the other tip that I want to share with you is about this Facebook group called Wrangler RVing. It's where other fellow Jeepers such as yourself are towing travel trailers. And you can see in that Facebook group all the different types of travel trailers and overland trailers that they tow and I thought I would let you know about that group in case you'd be interested in checking it out and I'll have a link to it in the description section of the video. And now let's talk about this video's subscriber tip segment where instead of a tip I will be making a request. And now for subscribers tips. The request that I'd like to make to you, the subscribers or viewers of this channel, is if you are towing anything with your Jeep, please feel free to send to me a video or a image of what you're towing because I'd like to make a video about it. Please send your images or videos to CheaperJeeperTV at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to put any images or videos of what you tow with your Jeep in a video coming up soon. And if you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you don't miss it when it comes out. Thank you very much. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Cheaper TV. I hope that you found it informative. And if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up? And if you're new to the channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button right there and then hit the alert bell so you'll be notified when our next video is released. Until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Cheaper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.